hip, hip, hooray for DNA. It provides the key to the plans for making everything in you and me. Before I start with this video, I want to go over a quick conceptual understanding of meiosis. So with meiosis, we need to have meiosis to produce our gametes, which were our sex cells. So for meiosis, we produce either sperm in male or eggs in female. That's why we do meiosis. These sex cells are important for when it comes to producing new offspring. Now meiosis is often represented this way. We have a beginning, we have something called diploid. It says diploid chromosomes. And what that means is it has a full number of chromosomes. So whatever the animal, however many chromosomes the animal usually has, it's this full number. So in our case, we have 46 chromosomes. So our full number is 46 chromosomes. And of those 46 chromosomes, they come in pairs. We've got 23 pairs of chromosomes that make up those 46. So that was, that's what the first part means. Diploid just means we have the full chromosomes. And before we start meiosis, we have all of our cells have 46 chromosomes. But then what happens is we sp we duplicate the numbers because we have to make, create out of that four, that first cell, we have to create four daughter cells. So we duplicate the number here and then we segregate, we separate them and then half them. So by the end, we had, we'd have something called a haploid number. So here I've written, written the haploid number and haploid just means we have half the original. So half the original. So in this case, we had 46 chromosomes originally. So each of these, each of these sperm cells, sperm cell 1, 2, 3, and 4, they'll only have 23 chromosomes, not your original 46. Now it's important because if you look at this kind of diagram, you'll see there's only you know, 40, there's only two pair, two here, so there's only two chromosomes here, and there's only one chromosome when it comes to sperms. But they only do that just to make it simpler for you, for you to be able to visualize. But what you can imagine is there's here, the first part, there's not just two of these. This is, each of these is a pair, but there's not just one pair, but there's 23 pairs in the original cell. When it comes to final sperm cell, there's not just one, but there's actually 23 individual single um, chromosomes. Right? So they just show the two and the one, just to show how, what happens to one of the chromosomes pairs, but this happens for every single pair as well, and you're going to have a random assortment of chromosomes in the end. So each sperm will have a random assortment of the 23 different types of chromosomes, and What's also important is for you to realize that something happens here which is also important. It's called crossing over. It happens in the metaphase. And crossing over means that the actual alleles and the chromosomes will be a bit different because of that crossing over. We'll go over that in a second. But it says the dot point itself says explain the relationship between the structure and behavior of chromosomes during meiosis and the inheritance of genes. So we've got to talk about the structure and behavior of chromosomes. So that was a bit what we just talked about, the fact that they you know, they separate, only half will be received from the original amount, and that we have that crossing over, that's the behavior. And we have to relate that to how inheritance works. So we'll do in this video. And before I start, I'm going to again go over those steps you should know. So here, this is the crossing over step, happens during metaphase one. And during crossing over, what you're going to have is you're going to have some of these chromosomes. Parts of it, you will they will swap their their actual coding. So these chromosomes have lots of different genes on them, and some of the genes will swap between chromosome from chromosome one, which is called chromosome one, and chromosome two. So these are your homologous pairs. So they code for the same things, but they just have different types of alleles on them. And now we had a swap. That happens here, that's the crossing over phase. And then after it, we have a segregation called independent assortment. So that's what we call it, independent assortment. But this is when we actually have them splitting. So you only have half from the original amount. This is the, you can call it a segregation or the independent assortment, where you have randomly each sperm. So at the moment, we're going for the example of sperm, but you can have the same example for eggs as well. But each sperm will only have half of the original amount of the cell. And what kind of sperm, what kind of chromosomes it gets is pretty much random. Right, so for, so we'll go over first crossing over what that was. And I'll use an example. I'll say that you had originally, you had these types of chromosomes in you. You had a brown allele, so an, a chromosome which had a black hair allele 
and a brown eye allele, which was your blue one. So you had it here, B, large B was black, the capital B was brown eyes. You had that on your one chromosome, and you duplicate, that's why you have two, because you duplicate them. And on the other one, you had a blue eyes and blonde hair. The small, the small B was blonde hair, and the small blue B was blue eyes. Now, you had these two different ones. And what happens during the metaphase one is that crossing over. So what happens is you have this one coming closer and then parts of it, not all of it, but parts of it will be swapped. So let's say, okay, that this lower part here will have some swapping happening. So you're going to have then this time part may be becoming blue, blue, and then leaving again. So now it's changed a bit and don't know why that happened. Sorry about that. And the other part was going to become red. So also what swapped is these small these genes which we said were here. So this was brown originally and this was blue originally. Now it's going to swap. So now this is blue, this part is blue. And the other part is brown. And now you have a new combination which wasn't there before. So now you have one part of those chromosomes which will code for, so this codes for black hair and blue eyes, this chromosome, and the other one codes for blonde hair and brown eyes, whereas the other half is still the same. So crossing over just meant that you have some swapping around, and then it creates new types of chromosomes which weren't there beforehand, and that increases variety, but we'll go over the next video, but that increases variety. That's the first step, that's your crossing over. And then what happens during independent sorbent? So remember, these were just these were just different types of chromosomes which were joined together. So two chromosomes which were joined together at this centromere. But what happens during the idea of random assortment is that you have them splitting into two. So they will go into their separate ways. So you're gonna have this one breaking off, and you're gonna have this one breaking off and your sperm will get one of each of these. You're going to have one of the parts of your blue one breaking off that way. I'll fix that in a second. I don't know why that's happening. I must have screwed something up with my layout, which is a shame. Um, so I'll, I'll pair that as well. The idea is that now you have these chromosomes separating into your different types of sperm. So you're going to have, originally you had just one cell. Now you have four, four different types of sperm. So we can call this sperm one. This is sperm two. This is sperm three. And this is sperm four. And remember when it comes to sperms, only one sperm, one sperm will actually fertilize an egg. And which one wins is pretty much random. So we only have one sperm which actually fertilizes an egg and which one actually wins is quite random. But what this actually means is that we have, for example, if this sperm wins, then you would pass on black, the black hair and the blue eye trait. Whereas if you if you have this one that wins, you're gonna have the brown eyes and black hair trait being passed on. Whereas if you have this one winning, you have your brown eyes and blonde hair being handed over. Whereas if this sperm wins, obviously I'm talking if, um, if you're a male, this would happen. This is your sperm. If you're female then you would receive this sperm. Um, but if this sperm wins, then you have blonde hair and blue eyes winning, and that being part of the allele that you pass, pass on. So you can see how crossing over and how the segregation means that the stuff that actually gets passed on can be quite different to what your characteristics might be. First of all, this crossing over means we have new different types of alleles being produced. So for example, let's say this person, because we had black hair and brown eyes being dominant, he had the different alleles. He had black hair and brown eye allele, plus he had a blonde hair and blue eyes allele. But these were recessive, so they didn't show. So he had black hair and brown eyes. But what he's actually passing on is sperm two wins. I mean, he means he's passing on black hair and blue eyes. So it's possible that his offspring have blue eyes and black hair, even though he didn't have that himself. And so for you should know how crossing over changes what kind of genes get passed along. And you should also know how this independent assortment, which happens here when you have them being pulled 
into sides and how sperm one only gets you know, one type of your alleles, not all of them, how that also affects the difference in inheritance of genes. How you won't inherit all of the genes you had, but only certain ones. And that might mean that your offspring looks quite different to you. That's why one of the reasons why there is lots of variation in your offspring or in your, your babies because it's yeah, different sperm will have different types of alleles in them. And which one wins is random. I hope that was useful. Thank you for watching.